And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Cumberland County Board of Commissioners meeting for April 15th, uh, 2024. Uh, glad we got a full house tonight, y'all. We can really have a good time tonight. I tell y'all what, y'all should <laughs> never have this many people and let me have the microphone. Oh, uh, but, <laughs> but Commissioner keeps shaking his head down. <laughs> Uh, we'll start off with our invocation and pledge by um, Commissioner Stewart. Dear God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to serve this beautiful uh, county, God, we pray for each and every citizen of Cumberland County. We pray for their health, God. God, we pray for all of those um, who are grieving right now and all those who are sick and afflicted. God, we pray that you would give us wisdom, guidance, and clarity as we attempt to do our very best in this meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, so um, we will have a couple of uh, presentations. Uh, first, we're going to do uh, the recognition of Officer Joshua uh, Elliott, and that will be done by uh, Vice Chair uh, Tony Stewart. How many got my picture? Right here. Okay. Just a little background here. On September the 19th, 2023, Joshua Theodore Elliott, a Cumberland County resident and a police officer with the city of Dunn was off duty when he witnessed a woman being assaulted and dragged out of a store while pleading for someone to help her. Officer Elliott intervened and was shot by the assailant. Through his actions, Officer Elliott was able to save the lives of the woman being assaulted and the innocent standbyers and the store, I'm sorry. Officer Joshua Elliott received the Life Saving Award from the town of Dunn, North Carolina. Thank you, Officer Elliott, for your bravery, your service, and your quick reaction. On behalf of the Cumberland County, you can come up. On behalf of the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners. I would like to give you this coin of the county. You're welcome. And the certificate reads, Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate is presented to Officer Joshua Elliott for your service as a police officer in the outstanding act of bravery with no regard to self or personal safety, but with great individual courage and dedicated devotion to duty. Thank you for your service to the city of Dunn and Cumberland County. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. can have some words to say, but I personally want to say thank you for doing what was in you to do. And I believe that you didn't have to be a police officer to do what you did, but you did it, even though that just shows what's in your heart, yes, not yes. just the badge you wear. So thank you. So you can have thank some you, words Mike. to say. Thank you. Thank you. You can speak to the mic. Um, you know, I just want to give thanks to God, you know, for allowing me to be here this day. And the one thing is I'm just thankful and I appreciate everything that Cumberland County has done for me, you know, um, from growing up and living here all my life to the commission. I'm just thankful. Uh, wait a minute. Hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Now, now, I don't know if that, is that your mother? Yes, sir. Now, now you better introduce your mother. I don't want you to get in trouble here because, see, in order for you to do the things that you've done, and, and thank you so very much, she instilled in you all of this. So don't you get yourself in trouble. So introduce your mom and your family because uh, they came out here to support you. But mom is always, always number, you know, she's right there. So 
I'm not gonna. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna let you go home. You are gonna get a meal tonight. Yeah. Otherwise, you might have had to eat at McDonald's on the way home tonight, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I like to thank my mom, Rita Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, my brother Justin, my uncle Frankie, my aunt Flora, uh, my godmom Pam, my cousin Michelle, and my aunt Shirley, and and my uncle Vitus, and my good folks from Dunn Police Department, Captain Rowland, and um, Officer Eason with uh, Cary Police Department. Thank you. Okay. So. And if I could call up Mr. Brian Johnson. Hey, Cap, um, I, I just want you to know I was recruiting him. Uh, so if that happens, just know we steal from each other. So he is here in Cumberland County, and we need some officers. So y'all sit back there. So from Dunn and Kerry, y'all can go ahead and go home. <laughs> Don't stop to talk to any of my bailiffs around here, OK? All right, come on up. Now, he's retired, so y'all can, can talk to Brian. Brian's one of my best. Uh, we've been around a long time, isn't that right, Brian? Yes, sir. Yes, I'll sir. tell you, and you're going to leave us now, huh? Yes, sir. So uh, uh, Brian's been with the Sheriff's Office since 2003. He decided it's time to uh, retire, uh, but I still think he's going to be working because I know how Brian is. Uh, I think I saw you down, yeah. downstairs. You already got a job. No, I haven't. <laughs> the man's already got a job. He's going on to the second one. Uh, presented to Brian K. Johnson from the sheriff's, at the Sheriff's Office. In recognition of outstanding service to the citizens of Cumberland County, December 22, 2003 through October the 31st, 2023, from the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, dated this April 15, Go ahead, you can have a couple of words. Yeah, introduce yeah. your people just, now. Well, my people not, couldn't make it okay. tonight, but uh, it's just me. I just want to say, um, first of all, I thank God for um, him keeping me for 20 years at the sheriff's office without any um, any harm or anything. And also, I want to thank my wife, who's, who couldn't be here tonight, you know, for supporting me throughout my uh, journey, uh, 20 years law enforcement. And uh, it wasn't always easy, but I endured and I got through it. And uh, I just want to say I thank, I love, Cum I love Cumberland County and uh, I mean, it's, it's really, it's, I really had some good times here, and uh, now I'm officially a juvenile court counselor downstairs <laughs> with uh, Department of Juvenile Justice. All right. Thank you. All right. That will take us to our public comment period. Uh, Mr. Manager. Yes. All right. Thank you all. The public comment period shall last no longer than 15 minutes. Time may be extended at the discretion of the board. Each speaker will have a maximum of three minutes to make remarks until the 15-minute limit is attained. 
No time may be yielded by a speaker to another speaker. Speakers will be acknowledged by the board in the order in which their names appear on the sign-up sheet. Speakers will address the board from the lectern and begin their remarks by stating their name and address. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions. Speakers will not discuss matters regarding the candidacy or persons seeking public office. Speakers will be courteous in their language and presentation. Personal attacks will not be tolerated. Written comments and or supporting documents may be left with the clerk to the board. Are there any speakers? We have one speaker. Vicki Mullins. Ms. Mullins, come right on up. Okay. <laughs> so, um, my name is Vicki Mullins. I live at 5905 Turnbull Road. Um, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed county commissioners, I hope this message finds you well. Today I stand before you to address a m matter of great importance to the residents of Cumberland County. Um, and I also am on the Fatville Parks Rec Advisory Council, so that's where this is coming from. Um, during the last uh, planning phase for the master plan, pool facilities emerged as a top priority for our residents, yet despite this an expenditure exceeding $131 million was recently adopted for the Crown Event Center. While this is undoubtedly su sufficient, there's the absence of a public swimming pool, particularly for those residing east of the Cape Fear River. Cumberland County is a vibrant and diverse community, yet nearly half of our land mass lacks convenient access to swimming facility. This and um, not only denies our residents the joy of swimming, but also deprives them of the essential life skills and jeopardizes their safety. Swimming is more than just a recreational activity, it is a vital life skill prompting physical fitness, mental well being, and community cohesion. By addressing this gap in our community infrastructure, we can foster in inclusivity and balance. I urge you as directed county commissioners to consider the urgent need for public swimming pool, especially east of the Cape Fear River. This investment will um, be invaluable returns in health, well-being, and community unity. Furthermore, the Cape Fear swim team, and that they are at Cape Fear High School, um, they're an integral um, part of our county sports culture and faces significant challenges due to the lack of local facilities. They're forced to commute long distances for training. Um, they actually get up at 5.30 on the Cape Fear team and go all the way into town and then have to be back in time for school. So they are, um, yeah, it's way out there. I implore you to um, prioritize this matter, assess its feasibility and take decisive action and your leadership in Addressing this issue will not only enhance the quality of life for countless residents, but also affirm our county's dedication um, to equity and accessibility. Thank you for your attention. Um, together, let's make Cumberland County a place um, where every resident has equal access to the benefits of a public swimming facility. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? There are no more speakers. All right, with that, I will close the uh, public hearing. Uh, that will take us to uh, presentations, uh, Mr. Chairman. I mean, Mr. Manager. Oh, you mean you a new title? Approval of the agenda. Huh? You got to approve the agenda first. Am I? Oh, I sure did miss that. That's why I got this manager here. Um, if I can get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Oh, you got anything? Yeah, okay. uh, two I items: presentation two A and item three G need to re be removed from the agenda. Two A, yeah. And which one? Item 3G, approval of the capital project ordinance 240087 for the landfill gas collection and treatment improvements. Okay. All right. Uh, with those uh, changes, uh, if I can get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That's unanimous. That will take us to our presentations. Um, and uh, it does give me, and I'll turn it over to the manager, but it gives me um, great pleasure to introduce the uh, Chancellor of Fayetteville State University, Mr. Darrell T. Allison. Um, as you are aware, the county and the city uh, uh, made a contribution to the Fayetteville-Cumberland uh, hub 
uh, that uh, not only does Cumberland County, uh, but does also uh, surrounding counties. And he uh, decided he was going to come and tell us about all the great things uh, that the hub is doing. And uh, I think he brought some of his uh, uh, staff with us that he introduced. So, uh, Chancellor Allison, welcome uh, to the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners. Uh, Chairman Adams and uh, commissioners, it's a, it's a pleasure uh, to be before you. And uh, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Empowering community growth. So, so uh, uh, this board uh, approved <coughs> investment uh, a new business hub uh, at Fayetteville University uh, May 22nd to help accelerate growth uh, among Fayetteville area businesses, enable more underrepresented businesses to participate in that growth. You know, and I'm happy to note, uh, no doubt about it, top line, your investment of a, a quarter of a million dollars. Um, but you also see, uh, because of your seed support, uh, in, a, in a real generous seat, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, the kind of uh, additional support um, that um, had come our way in order for us to have uh, a good launch and, I believe, uh, a good report uh, to share uh, with, this, uh, uh, with this body. Um, I think this is very important. Uh, it is the why. It is the why. So, so the vision is to boost capacity, uh, underrepresented businesses to complete, to compete and grow. Uh, and as you can see in the source is the Lending Tree uh, Study Report in the Federal Observer on uh, the 22nd. And you see the opportunity. 11% of federal businesses are black owned, highest percentage in the nation. Uh, in 2021, high growth potential for underutilized segment. And you kind of see how that's broken out. And that's the opportunity. This was the challenge. Less than 5% of the city of Fevel, um contracts have been uh, with uh, minority women-owned firms, less than 0.5% uh, African-American firms, et cetera. And again, that's information from the city of Fevel in terms of the why the investment, the why uh, this uh, important work here at Fevel State University and in the community. Uh, along that, uh, we're excited, and uh, as we all know, obviously, County Commissioners, um, uh, you as well as Fayetteville State University, we were uh, very much, uh, very fortunate, very blessed. Uh, the legislature, uh, 2021 historic capital investment support uh, from the state uh, amounts uh, that uh, this this region hadn't seen, uh, I dare say, ever, <laughs> in terms of. Uh, the overall, when you when you combine uh, the the county as well as uh, the kind of funding we re receive from uh, Fayetteville State University, and we thought uh, what a what a what timely, relevant, and, and uh, what an opportunity uh, to really leverage and, and impact. And so, uh, September 2022, uh, many of you were there. Uh, we launched uh, our first official uh, Fayetteville Cumberland Regional Entrepreneurial and Business Hub, and we were really really excited about it. Uh, because it gave us a place uh, where we would really have a regional economic one-stop shop for businesses. And that means bid opportunities, bonding assistance, government contracts, <laughs> contractor certification, and access to capital. So we launched it uh, September 22, and uh, we're, we're here uh, April 2024. So 2023 really gave us the 12-month window um, to, to really uh, set the metrics and also measure. And uh, I'm now going to pivot to our report out uh, to our county commissioners. And I also want to make sure we, we are clear. We are very laser focused. We're not a hub that can be all things to all people. And as we said to you uh, before your investment, uh, we have really stuck to our primary focus as relates to boosting economic capacity of our underserved communities, minority women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, and locally owned. Locally owned, obviously, we're thinking about Fayetteville and Cumberland, uh, and then outside of Cumberland, the nine uh, regional counties here that make most of uh, the Sand Hills region. Again, very laser being focused has been the work in the last year in 2023. Progress to date. First full year, we had over 300 events, over 5,000 participants, 
over 2,500 registered clients, and this is where it really gets good. 54 new businesses launched, 240 new jobs created. So a lot of this work was uh, uh, flying the plane as <laughs> and, and building it as we go, and and so uh, uh, real yeoman's work. And I'll, I'll uh, obviously chair salute some of our leaders that are here with me uh, on this on this work here. Proof of success in accelerating growth among underserved segments. Again, our focus are those three critical areas: minority women-owned business firms, veteran-owned business locally owned business. We are happy to state, because of our work, distribution of over $30 million in contracts won with FSU Hub Assistance in 2023. You also see how we targeted, again, laser being focused, so locally owned, 94%, minority women owned, 77%, veteran owned, 80%, awarded to at least one of the focus segments 90, 98%. I hit the wrong thing there. Here we go. What's next? And again, we're really excited because we just um, got off the ground, I would say, 2023. And as uh, I know our uh, U County Commissioners know, a lot of projects, a lot of, lot, of, lot of buildings coming out of the ground. And such the case for Felva State University, and approximately 200 million in major construction renovations 2024 to 2027, really, really targeted time, about two and a half years. Uh, most of all of these have to be built. Health and Wellness Center, uh, $12 million. Uh, that is fall of 2025. New, new Residence uh, Hall, uh, $50 million. Uh, that's fall of 2025. College of Education, $66 million. Uh, that is fall of 2026. A new parking deck, $10 million. Fall of 2025, uh, Cook Building, uh, $10 million, uh, 25, 26. And uh, other major renovations, uh, $50 million, that's on, ongoing. And so, again, we, we see a great opportunity when you see in 2023 kind of the laser beam focus that we've had now that we're, we're starting to put uh, more projects uh, on, on, the, on, on, the, on the terrain here. If we have that same focus, not just here at Felber State University, but with the city and with the county, I am confident uh, that we're going to have a story to tell here with many, many chapters, good chapters, not horror stories, but celebratory stories here in Felber, Cumberland, and beyond. What I'm really excited about, although you've got a lot of data facts and information, it really does come down to the power of one. And rather than me tell the story, uh, I thought it'd be more impactful uh, for you all to hear a testimonial of, of one. Now, here's where I, I uh, don't know what I do here, but uh, <laughs> ample assistance. <laughs> all right. Thank you. September 2022, the mission of the Hub is to provide impactful support to small businesses in our regional Tier 1 and Tier 2 counties that wish to create and grow profitable and sustainable businesses. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Edward Lucas, a service-disabled veteran business owner who leveraged the Hub training and resources to help his business reach new heights in government contracting. My name is Edward Lucas. I'm the owner of Mexico Construction located here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Our specialty is residential rehabs and renovations. We also work with commercial projects. So after we uh, went through the hub application process here, I was able to become a certified hub business in North Carolina. In 2023, we were awarded uh, over $20 million worth of contracts in mm -hmm. North Carolina. Well, the growth has is, is us, you know, help grow our company. We've got you know, several new employees. Um, it's also helped us um, really just serve the community. Um, there's a lot of a lot of our projects are restoring homes and replacing homes. And so that's, it's given us an opportunity to touch people's lives in a lot of different ways, which is awesome. So it's, um, our business has grown tremendously. After the health training, 
we cast the net out there to the county, to the city, uh, to the state um, entities, and really they help me become aware of where to search for opportunities. Well, my recommendation would be definitely take advantage of the training because um, there's always something that you can learn. And we're excited. I mean, that's pretty much the trifecta. Uh, a resident here of Fayetteville, a disabled veteran, uh, and uh, over $20 million of, of, of contracts here. Uh, and uh, he's grown his business. That's more, biz uh, more opportunities for employees. Uh, and that's just the beginning. We're really, really excited. Uh, last but not least, it, it's been a real team effort. And so what we were uh, in design thinking about our hub uh, you all are familiar and aware of our uh, illustrious Broadwell College of, of Business and Economics. And I mean, it's um, high ranking nationally, an MBA program, just a, a, lot of, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of good coming out of it. But what was critically, what was strategic for us is, yes, uh, the, the, the College of uh, Business and Economics is going to be well served for our students. But it's so much more. Uh, that can be done, and so and so. Though our hub is across the street there in Bronco Midtown, and it's overseen uh, by by our leadership with the hub, but it, it's also one where for citizens who are not students, citizens that are not looking to get a degree, we want to be able to make sure that they're comfortable, uh, and they're also um, uh, drawing uh, from that experience, like like Mr. Lucas, and so it it really 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 is working. But I want to highlight. Uh, two individuals. Uh, you saw her here, Dr. Tamara Coven, ex ex exceptional leader, and she's executive director of the Federal Cumberland Entrepreneur and Business Hub. Will you please stand? <laughs> and we have a representative of our College of Business Economics here with Dr. Saad Tabakata, uh, uh, W.T. Brown Endowed Chair and Distinguished Professor of Economics and former Dean of the College of Business Economics here. Please stand. So, Madam, Mr. Chair, and, and uh, uh, County Commissioners, that that concludes my my remarks. We're really happy. Again, it's a first year report, and again, it's one where we were beating your door down uh, to make sure uh, that we share with you uh, uh, the return uh, on the investment you made, and most important for the for the citizens uh, of Cumberland County. It's very important to us. I know it's very important to you, and and at this time, I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Any commissioner? Well, I, I will tell you that uh, I've been to the Hub on uh, numerous occasions, and the amount of activity there is just um, uh, tremendous. And, you know, one of the things that we talk about, and this was, uh, I think, uh, Commissioner Keith uh, chaired the committee, and, and Commissioner Stewart was there, and I was there on the ARP committee to be able to do this, and, and uh, uh, Commissioner Faircloth voted to do it is that one of the things that we talked about with these art funding was everybody talked about uh, being able to do things. We talked about the rescue, and that's to rescue these businesses in town to be able to give them the ability to be able to do the things they do. And we saw the success story uh, today to be able to do that. But, you know, that's the large success story, but I believe there are many, many more uh, because if, uh, if you all know anything about the way I do, uh, Ms. Coven will tell you how many people I've sent up there when I talk to them. And I say, just go out there. And they say, what do I need? I said, just go out there and ask for Ms. Coven, and you'll be taken care of. And I will tell you, thank you, because uh, a lot of those people come back and say that uh, the amount of information they got was invaluable. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about it is it's free information, and there's nothing better than free and by laughing over there. Um, so, you know, $250,000 is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a good investment. But the return, and it's not always in dollars and cents. It's always also about people and being able to pour in the people in this community. And that's, I think that's what we do. That's what Federal State does. And um, we want to thank everybody who's at that hub uh, to be able to do that. And I will tell you this. Um, uh, for the commissioners, because I have been there. They talk about the businesses that they undergirded, but the building has been open to so many other things that have happened in the community where people have had opportunities to go in there 
even from, uh, he's not here tonight, but Robert Van Gens will tell you what he's done from the economic development to be over there at, at the hub. Uh, and so, and, and it transforms uh, Murkison Road and the things that Fayetteville State are doing. Uh, we talked about it in the op committee that, uh, uh, and I think the manager follows it up with it, which is what's happening to us now is capacity in this community. Mm -hmm. Capacity of businesses to be able to do all the things. We saw all the building that's going on at Fayetteville State. The county's doing it. The city's doing it. Fayetteville Tech's doing it. Method is doing it. And if we don't build capacity, and that's what you all are doing over there, uh, building capacity uh, in this community. And so we, we, we thank you for coming by. It's always good to come back and hear uh, what our investment has been doing. The c people of this community, the citizens of this community, who say, have you uh, uh, invested in this community? And I think we did. Commissioner Keith. Yeah, thank you. And <clears throat> I know I said I didn't have a question. I know you had one. That's why I waited. <laughs> uh, but to, you, to your point, I've always been a fan of investing in the community instead of spending in the community, and that's yeah. what we're doing here. Yeah. We're turning these businesses into taxpayer businesses that are employing people who become taxpayers and help us out. Um, how would someone get the information? Are there any... Uh, any open houses coming up, or is there any yep. uh, an, e an email or a website or something that uh, someone who's thinking about this? God knows, I wish I'd have had something like this when I got in business. It was kind of <laughs> OJT, when, you know. You learn from your experience. To me, is just you have made a lot of mistakes, and so if you can help out with that, yeah, I, I, absolutely. So again, if you saw, we had 300 events, 5,000 participants, 2,500 registered clients, mm -hmm. and then we let, we ended with 54 new businesses launched, 240 new jobs. And I want to make sure we, we're laser beam focused on this. Activity is okay. And uh, activity is okay. But it's not like that word of mouth. And, and again, uh, I, think, I think we've got an excellent runway here. $30 million was secured for those who, 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 who partner with us. And you heard one who was able to get over $20 million, yeah. uh, one of our own. The word gets out. That power of the word of mouth, it's one thing to come there and get information, but, but when we start churning here, uh, uh, here real soon, uh, because it's got to get built, we want to make sure that that dollar uh, stays in Fevel, Cumberland, at least 10 to 20 times. Yep. Before, if it's got to go out, let it go out after the 25th round, <laughs> uh, not, not the first. And so, again, very laser beam focused. I, I, I think that the, the best is why, why I wanted to make sure uh, that the young man shared his story, not me. More of that's got to get out, and I, and I think we're on to something here, Commissioner. I really do. Yeah, it's great. And I just have, uh, oh, Commissioner Fairclough. Yeah, I do have one word. I, I saw you introduce a couple of your colleagues back there, and I, I'm very familiar with those colleagues that you introduced. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but I just thank you for recognizing them. I, I am on the, the board of uh, the uh, NBA. Groups and I've, I've I've had a number of years uh, experience on that and uh, thank you every, for your every, service. Every couple of, every couple of, I mean about twice a year we get to uh, hear a lot of good things from the Fable State uh, MBA program and the uh, the business school and it's just it's, it's very it's a very proud thing in the community and everybody doesn't know the interaction that the county has with with Fable State but we are we are very proud and very humble and. Um, Glad that, you know we could be of some assistance in this, and uh, and uh, Dr. Tavacoli's successor uh, will be nominated for the FAEDC board tonight. So we're we're a little bit proud of that as well. So everybody's not aware of the interaction that the county does have with Fayetteville State, and we're proud to uh, to to move that along. When we yes, do. sir. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And the la and I guess the last thing I'd say is that. Uh, again, thank you for what you do. But I, I would tell you that uh, I heard the success story and what we did here in the community. Uh, but um, I got a phone call uh, from Chapel Hill. Uh, and uh, I think you all presented at, at UNC with the Board of Governors and even some people from the legislature. Uh, you all are putting Cumberland County on the map and uh, as a place to do business. Because uh, they called me down here and said, uh, how can we get this? And I told them they couldn't have it. Uh, and, uh, but they wanted uh, this in their community. And I think I sent to the commissioners not long ago uh, that uh, North Carolina, in terms of the amount of government and military um, funding that they did, that Cumberland County led that charge. 
And I believe that's probably because of uh, the military part with Federal State, but also because of this hub, getting people uh, hub certified and all of that. And, and uh, so thank you all so very much for what you do. Y'all come on up here. You know I always got to get a picture. <laughs> come on, Broncos. <laughs> come on. I'll let y'all stand in my picture. All right. Thank you all for coming. All right, that will take us to the consent agenda. Is there anything to be pulled off the consent agenda? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Besides, he's already took those off from the agenda. Um, and so, uh, if I can get a second. Second. It's been moved to second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That is unanimous. That will take us to our public hearings, uh, community development program year 2024 annual action plan, Mr. Manager. Yes, yeah, the public hearing pro uh, procedures, arguments by the proponents and opponents shall be limited to a maximum of 10 minutes each side. If there is no group representative, each speaker shall be allotted a maximum of three minutes until the 10-minute time period is attained. Rebuttals will only be permitted at the discretion of the chairman with a maximum of one three-minute presentation by each side. The first public hearing is a Community Development Year 2024 Action Plan. Uh, HUD requires a public hearing for each year if we have an action plan. Ty Vault, um, Chief of Staff, and in this role, Interim uh, Community Development Director will present this item and answer any questions you may have. And for the commissioners, this was sent to you in your packet. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here before you t uh, today primarily request that you hold a public hearing <laughs> that has been noticed for this evening for the draft year 2024 annual action plan. But before the public hearing is open, I would like to provide some general information on what is in this plan in the upcoming program year, as well as a high-level overview of the funding allocations. The county receives entitlement funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development every year which includes the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, and the Home Investment Partnerships Program, or HOME. In order for us to use CDBG funds, our projects and activities must meet one of the following national objectives. The first being a principally, to principally benefit low to moderate income individuals, second to aid in the elimination of slum and blight, or to meet an urgent need such as a presidentially declared disaster. At least 70% of CDBG funds must be for the benefit of low to moderate income persons. Home funds are used to address housing-related activities, and we do this through partnerships with public and private entities. In order for the county to maintain its entitlement status, the county must submit materials to HUD every three years to requalify as an entitlement community. Those materials include cooperation agreements with, that we have with eight of our nine municipalities. 
This will allow the county to include CDBG and home funds in each of those geographic areas. Otherwise, any municipality not included would have to apply for funding through the state, which is more competitive, which is more competitive. In addition, Cumberland County is required to submit certain reports periodically to HUD. Every five years, the county must submit a strategic plan or consolidated plan, which outlines our priority needs and goals and objectives for meeting those needs. The current consolidated plan covers the performance period of July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2025. The planning process involves outputting, obtaining input from residents and other stakeholders um, during the needs assessment. Then each year, community development will prepare an annual action plan, which outlines how we plan to use that funding allocation we receive for that year. At the end of each program year, we prepare a performance and evaluation report to demonstrate our accomplishments for the year. During the consolidated planning or strategic planning process, Cumberland County identified the following priority needs for the five-year planning period. First, housing. To improve, preserve, and expand the inventory of affordable housing for low to moderate income persons and families living in Cumberland County. Second, homelessness. To improve the living conditions and support services and increase the availability of housing for unhoused persons and families in Cumberland County and eliminate unfair housing practices that may lead to homelessness. Third, special needs. To improve, preserve, and expand opportunities and services for persons with special needs and the disabled in Cumberland County. Fourth, community development. To improve, preserve, and create new public and community facilities, infrastructure, and public services to ensure the quality of life for all residents in Cumberland County. And fifth, economic development. To increase and promote job creation, job retention, self-sufficiency, <clears throat> education, job training, technical assistance, and economic empowerment of low to moderate income residents in Cumberland County. Our estimated CDBG, CDBG allocation is $1,495,741, and that includes our program year 2024 estimate allocation, program income, and prior year carry forward. The estimated total home allocation is $3,501,088, which includes the estimated allocation, program income, and prior year carry forward, and also includes our home art funds. For our continuum of care grants, or COC, which are supportive housing programs, the estimated total is $228,152. And through the annual budget process, the department has requested $316,000 $995 in general fund dollars. And other general funds, which are our homeless initiative funds, are $187,500, of which $87,500 is the estimated contribution from the city of Fayetteville. And our estimated match is $577,211. This brings the total estimated budget to $6,306,687. And to briefly summarize it a different way, that means our estimated grants total $4,864,609, and the estimated program income is $360,372, and our total general fund and other sources in, uh, are estimated at $1,081,706. For anticipated projects for the upcoming year, in CDBG, we have $345,000. Uh, $508 for, sorry, for CDBG and for home, $210,000 of which we anticipate completing up to 20 projects. For homeowner assistance, we are estimating $50,000. Our affordable housing projects, which also include CDBG, home, prior for program income, and general fund match are estimated at $3,654,052. Housing project delivery, which, are, which is our staff costs, $269,296. Public services, which is, our, which is for our service projects, our local, um, for no, our local nonprofits, 122,000. Homeless services, which aids our supportive housing programs, $425,652. Public facilities, 200,000. Demolition and clearance, 10,000. And economic development, 25,000. I wanna mention that really quick, economic development. I know that number may seem low, but when we true up um, at the end of the year, these numbers do change. And so last year we had 25,000, uh, that number was increased to $50,000. And our total estimated general fund administration and planning, 213,937, 
um, from our grants and 274,247 in home funds, and again, $316,995 in general funds. Uh, the annual action plan has been distributed to all eight town halls, as well as made available at the, com at the uh, community development office and online. Community development staff presented, and I want to recognize them. Um, when I say staff, I mean Devin Newton, our community services manager, and Dee Taylor, our, our previous director, um, presented at the town halls during the months of February and March to discuss our programs, and we invited questions and comments from the representatives and the public to announce um, that we are publishing the draft annual action plan for review and for comment, which will be which began on Wednesday, March 20th, and will end this Friday, um, April 19th. After the public hearing this evening, we will bring the final version of the annual action plan before the board on Monday, May 6th, for actual approval, and then submit to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development by Wednesday, May 15th, the May 15th deadline. And before I end, um, I want we listened to the board and we wanted to. Uh, Commissioner Boos is not here. But um, April 1st through 5th was Community Development Week in Cumberland County, and the month of April is National Community Development Month. Um, at the Monday, April 1st Board of Commissioners meeting, we showcased some before and after pictures from a cross-section of CDBG, pro CDBG projects in recognition of uh, 2024 being the 50th anniversary of the Community Development Block Grant Program. So I want to recognize one of those success stories uh, tonight. So uh, Mr. Charles Lilly of 1852 Lake Upchurch Drive in Parkton on the Cumberland County side um, was a program participant in our housing re rehab program. Um, you can see on the screen some of the work items that were addressed in his re rehab project. Um, here at the county, Sean Underwood served as project manager in the, our, our actual contract. It was Pemi, Pemi Remodeling Company. Um, and this is the before and after of that house. Uh, Mr. Lidley, due to health, was not able to be in attendance tonight, but his daughter, um, Aunt, um, Esther um, San Sanchos, is here in her, his place uh, to provide some brief remarks about the program, how it's been impactful for him and for their family. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. It's great being here with you. Thank you for this um, great pleasure to speak with you all. I stand not only as an advocate, but as a firsthand witness of the ne necessity of the continuation of a housing rehabilitation program. My father had his home built in 1968 um, and just a few feet away from our family home, which was destroyed. But he extended himself tirelessly working in Cumberland County at the McDonald Grading Company, located right here in Fayetteville where he eventually retired. Um, I won't get into my age, but that was some <laughs> years ago. Um, but I will say that the home, much like Bones, after many years, it kind of has age and it goes down. And that's what happened with our family home. And due to this, um, my dad, during this time, my dad's health began to decline and slowing down. So he wasn't able to keep the upkeep and the maintenance on the home. Um, and because of his limited income, um, the the house just began to deteriorate. We began to see mold creep into the home. We began to see um, the bathroom deteriorating. And because of that, um, my dad's health, he is a cardio patient, he began to inhale things that were causing his health to decline more and more. So we were able to come across the Cumberland County Rehab Program and we were introduced to it. And because of that, they came in and really, really, really gave my dad a quality life because of uh, the improvements that were being able to, that were made to his home. And because of the rehabilitation and the revitalization um, of his home, dad was able to live there and, and experience what quality life was all about. As a family member, it was impressive to me to be able to be hand on hand, to see the revitalization, uh, revitalization, to see the staff come in and honor him um, and give him this peace of mind in his latter years after sowing so much into our community. So I'm a strong advocate because I was there to see on hand, on deck, what they were doing and to see the before and after and to see him experience his better days in his latter days. Thank you so very much. I, I think it's always important. Again, we, 
people laugh when we bring folk up here, but I think it's because we touch people's lives uh, on this earth and as we move through life, um, and for him to be able to have a quality of life uh, near the, I ain't gonna say near the end, but uh, have a quality of life as he gets older, I, I think that's what we all want in life, and to be able to give that, I think this board uh, wants to say uh, thank you to him for being here and working all those years, and that we're glad to be able to be able to be an assistance to him. Thank you so very much, and thank you for hearing our story. Thank you for giving your story. Thank you. Does uh, any commissioner have a question of Mr. Vault? I have one. Yes, sir. Um, because this board entered into an MOU with uh, the city of Fayetteville uh, for $100,000 for each one of us to be able to do um, the person that we had that do all of that. It's my understanding that the city of Fayetteville took theirs away, so if that's the case uh, and redirected theirs, do we really have an MOU or where are we on the MOU? And if so, why would we be still doing the hundred thousand dollars? I don't I don't understand. So I I give you that if you and I know you interim, so if you need to go back, look it up and revisit that and come back with an answer, that's fine too. Uh but um uh that's my understanding. Yes, sir. We do have so we do have an agreement with um what is the position? Um it's the um uh, person who does all the data. Homeless services. We have a homeless services, and so. They um, did all the data and everything correct. and all of that, and, and each so, one of us agreed to do that. Yes, sir, and so we still, we have that individual who does, who does that particular work. Um, I know Heather's had some conversations, yeah. and so she's coming up. Um, I mean, it's not the MOU if only one side is doing the work. I mean, that's, that's, that, I'm just trying to figure it out, and you're asking for some money for that, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so our most recent communication with Kelly Oliveira at the city is that the city will continue to provide their um, entire 100000 okay. to the county for this fiscal year. For this year? Uh, what for, happens? For the, on, for the next fiscal to, year, the one we're getting ready to enter. The new one? The new one. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Wanted her to say that because she got the. <laughs> I just wanted to, that, you know, uh, just want to make sure. I will open the uh, public comment period. Uh, are there any speakers? There are no speakers. I will close the public comment period. Thank you. Uh, that was for information purposes. We yes, look sir. for you to bring it back uh, for a vote. Thank you. Uh, that will take us to our rezoning cases. Uh, Mr. Manager. Yes, we have four rezoning cases tonight. Uh, Rawls Howard, Director of Planning and Zoning will present these items and answer any questions you may have. You gonna read the? Uh, you want me to reread it? Well, well this is for the uh, I got uh, for the zoning, public, which is different public. than the public comment period. It should be a different one, right? No, it's the same. Oh, it's the same. Yeah, okay. but our re arguments no, for the proponents and opponents shall be limited to a maximum of ten minutes for each side. If there's no group representative, each speaker shall be allotted a maximum of three minutes until the ten minute period is attained. Rebuttals will only be permitted at the discretion of the chairman with a maximum of one three-minute presentation by each side. See, that's a different one, because the other one's just three minutes, so this gives you 10 minutes. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Thank you very much, commissioners. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, yeah, it's Good evening Mr. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Uh, the first case we have, uh, it's not in um, a numerical order, but we're starting with case yeah. number 0006, uh, which is before you here. You can see this case highlighted by the red star is up in the north uh, pretty much central area of the county up near the uh, town of Linden, as you can see highlighted there. Uh, the applicant owner is the American Material Company on behalf of the G uh, Glenard W. Bailey Limited Partnership. Uh, the agent is American Materials Company, LLC. The request is to go from A1 Agricultural just to simply transfer it over to a conditional zoning but staying within the same zoning district. So the intent is to expand upon some quarrying and sand mining that's going on out in that area. So it's going to be expanding over onto this property. But the acreage is uh, pretty big. It's just a little under 100 acres, so it's about 97, as you can see there, plus or minus. So this is the subject properties you can see here. It's highlighted in the red crosshatch. This is Collier's Chapel Church Road here. Uh, the site is being accessed off Durant-Nixon Road that you can see here. Uh, as you can see across the Durant-Nixon Road, the existing mining operations. As we go through, you'll see some clearer photos to show exactly what kind of a scale that we're talking about we're there. But for the most part, this is an, uh, a largely agricultural area. You do have some single-family homes, but not a whole lot. It's mainly a lot of farming that's up out in that area, so a lot of wide open space. 
this is the zoning, as I said before in the previous slide. You can see the current operations uh, here that are across the street. Uh, the intent is to simply just carry it across to this parcel, across the Durant-Nixon Road here onto this parcel. But the zoning out here is largely A1. So as I said before, it's largely just wide open spaces and farmland that you can see. Uh, there is no water or sewer out here. It does have a sort of a mixed match of hydric and hydric inclusion soils on here, but they're not intending to build anything per se. It's really just for mining sand. Uh, so the applicable uh, plan for this area is the North Central Cumberland L Land Use Plan from 2011, which calls for associated districts of A1, A1A, R40, and R40A in conservation. So staff felt that the request as it stood as a conditional zoning request is compliant with that plan. This is the site plan that you see for the actual operation. This is actually tied to the request itself. So this is how the property will be developed if the board decides to go forward with an approval for the request. Uh, as you can see highlighted here, and I'll try to hit on some of this as much as possible, this, uh, this little green little cul-de-sac looking thing here is actually graves that are on the site. So th we have some, sim some, uh, some graves that were identified through their due diligence process. They have put a buffer around these graves here that you can see here, but for the most part, the area that's highlighted in red that you can see this area here, I'm going to try to go around this the best I can with a little pointer here, but this area right around here is the area that's going to be mined. Everything else is pretty much staying off limits. Uh, as you can see, the, the areas that are here that back up to these larger parcels here and this area right around here is going to be maintained in its current state. So they're not going to be mining only this area that is right here. You can see here by the buffer, these colorations you can see around the uh, edge here. That is, uh, it's going to be a bermed. It's going to be a bermed six feet tall, 50 foot wide, and there's also going to be another 50 foot wide buffer that's on, that stands on the outside of that. So uh, again, there's a lot of land here, but there's going to be a, a, a lot of buffering and a lot of trees that are going to be maintained, and the concentration of the area of the activity is only going to be pretty much in the central part of the property. Some of the key conditions of approval uh, is that it does have to comply with the site plan, as I mentioned. Uh, there is a, reclam uh, a reclamation of the site is required at the time of its closure. That's also part of our zoning ordinance. They have to close it, uh, I believe, within a three-month period as soon as it uh, is shut down. They have to have uh, the equipment taken off after three months, but then if they're going to put a pond, which is typically what happens with these kind of uses, they would just shut that down immediately and then just reclaim it. But all the equipment that's on there would have to be taken off after three months. Uh, um, we have some conditions there that address the noise and the vibration and such. 31 acres will be quarried and the remaining acreage will be utilized and undisturbed. Uh, per the ordinance and per the conditions that are on the site, the quarry must be at least 100 feet away from the road right of way, which it is per the site plan. And as I had mentioned before, there is a perimeter berm six feet in height planted with a double row of quick growing vegetative landscaping, which is indicated on the site plan. So. I know there was a lot to digest, so if I'm talking too fast, please uh, just feel free to tell me to slow down or if I can go back. This is the subject property that you can see here, pretty much a, a wooded piece of land. Uh, this is looking still at the subject property. Again, it's a very wide expanse of property. It takes up a lot of road frontage along the road. You can see the sign out there as required by the state statutes for public notification. It's the county vehicle. This is the southwest view, southwest view looking down Durant-Nixon Road. The northwest view, looking immediately across the street, that would be the area where the current quarry operations are on the other side of that tree line way back in the woods back there. This is the northeast view with the subject site immediately on the right-hand side. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the request. When we took this to the planning board at last month's meeting, they had supported that by an 8-0 to zero vote. So I'll be glad to answer any, any questions you got. Anybody got any questions? Are they doing anything with a buffer from uh, the road or anything like that? Uh, yes. If you look here, let me go back to the site plan. All of this area that is here, they have to stay, as I said, uh, I believe it's 100 foot off of the mm -hmm. right of way, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, they're going to have to do some planning and some buffering that is along the edge here. Okay. Yeah. I've got a quick question. Uh, Commissioner Faircloth, and Thank then I'll come to Commissioner Keith. What, uh, what kind of access do the people who may be, whose ancestors or relatives may be buried there, do they have access to that? Yes. Uh, they do? Okay. Yes, sir. Commissioner Keith. Yeah, mine has to do with access to. Do I understand that the quarry operations will be coming on the the road in the back, right? 
It'll be coming off Durant Nixon, this area here. I don't yeah. know if you see my thing. It's going to be okay. coming off this road. This road here d does not have access. If you can see, there's some slender little properties that stand between this right. property and the road, so they would not be able to have access off okay. of the well, that's, Colliers. Well, that's probably better anyway. It, yeah. it, it seems like it's a, so only a third of the property is actually going to be used for its intended purposes, with the other two-thirds basically being buffers. Left as the, is. Left as. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any... Is there any requirement that it stays that way, or could they expand later? Uh, if they do, they'd have to come back for a, um, an amendment to their conditional zoning. So if this is approved, they have to stick with what they right. have here it, per that, their site so plan. I wanted to make sure that they couldn't come back without an additional conditional yes, sir. zoning. Thank you. Right. I'll open the public hearing. Are there any uh, speakers? We have one speaker, Anthony. What is your Harris. 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 I live American Journal's um, operations manager. And, and just to clarify. Can you introduce yourself? And, oh, and, and Anthony you Harris. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the operations manager for American Materials. The, the property here, we will be, we've just got a DOT crossing there. Uh, and we, the traffic from this mining operation actually will go out on Carlos Road. Okay. Okay. It'll be hauled over there and then processed and go out on Carlos Road at our existing entrance that we've been there since, uh, you know, for about 12 years. So, so this is just a mineable area here. And to answer your question about will any of this other be affected, no, because it's all wetlands we have to stay yeah, out of. Okay. So it, it's actually woods. Commissioner Keith. No, I made a motion. Well, you got to close it. I got, right, got it. You closed the post. Are you finished? Yes, sir. He was trying to. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm more. sorry. <laughs> all right, thank you. We spent way too much time <laughs> taking pictures earlier. <laughs> any other speakers? There are no more speakers. I'll close the public hearing. Commissioner Keith. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in the case of zoning 24-0006, I move to approve the rezoning request from A1 Agriculture District to A1 slash conditional zoning agriculture conditional zoning district and find that the request is consistent with the North Central Land Use Plan, which calls for farmland and open space at this location. The request is reasonable and in the public interest as it is compatible with and in harmony with the surrounding land use activities and zoning. Yes, it's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That passes, uh, takes us to 0007. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So uh, as you can see by the highlighted map for case 007, this is more of a centrally located location just off Clinton Road, uh, just south of Eastover uh, to the east of the city of Fayetteville. Uh, just uh, east of the I-95 South um, corridor. Uh, the applicant owner is Stephen Ledwell, trustee. The agent is Mr. Dale Kidd. The request is to go from a rural residential and CP conditional zoning uh, to CP conditional zoning. Uh, the intent is to basically expand an existing trailer or truck trailer terminal operation that's existing there on the site. The owner owns the property next to it, the site that's been there for quite some time. He's just moving to the, he's going to be expanding parking for some office expansion. Uh, the acreage here is just about 8.15 plus or minus plus or minus acres. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the site, and I'll show you some additional maps here in just a second, here's I-95 that sits just to the west here. Uh, this is Clinton Road, so this is at the interchange of Clinton Road and I-95, right before Rock Hill Road comes out here. A little bit more of an aerial and some coloration, colorization. Again, you can see that it's surrounded for the most part. You have Cashwell uh, appliance parts. You have the existing service center here. Again, the owner is looking just to expand into this area that sits over here just to the west. And you have Vanguard right across the street with some manufactured homes to the west. Does he own the yellow part too? As it goes across the area. I th I'm pretty sure I believe the owner owns this as well and the, and the home site that sits on the parcel just on the west side of that as well. So the existing zoning that's out here, as you can see, so like just to answer your question, I know the owner for, from what staff has informed me is I believe owns this parcel right here, right here with the house that's sitting on it as well, but the request is just for this one and then these two. So you can see that it's already zoned um, CP conditional zoning. It's basically to um, modify the existing conditional zoning request to extend it over here to this site. Uh, so but is the, there a D? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you go and cut that Where's the description? I mean, if he owns all that, and I understand that, but how do we get the description of whatever? That's uh, a parcel so that line. Know? That's a that's following a parcel line. But it cuts across. I'm just trying to figure out. See right there. I right mean, here. He's not taking the whole lot. Well, I, I believe that's a parcel line. 
It's not, it's, it's not splitting or split zoning a piece of property. No, if you take the red out, there's yellow hundred on that land. Right? Yeah, so this is just for public notification just yeah. to show you what's on the property. But uh, it's my understanding that this is not, this is not a split zoning, I don't think, is it, David? Yeah. Okay. No, so it has a parcel on it. Okay. That's the, yeah. Um, so again, so here's the parcel again, as you can see. There is water and sewer generally within the area. There's a water line that sits out in front, and there's a sewer line somewhat adjacent to the property, as you can see. This site is subject to the Vander land use plan, which calls for suburban density residential and light commercial. So your motion would reflect if the board decides to approve it, there would be a plan map amendment to basically extend the light commercial designation over to the designated properties that are part of this. Um, uh, as part of this request. Uh, so as such, being the fact that it did split between two different land use plan designations, uh, staff did not feel that it was plan compliant with the adopted plan as it sits, but again, your motion would reflect a change of that plan if you decided to approve it. This is the conditional zoning site plan, as you can see. So the uh, proposal, the, w the way that, or what was communicated to staff is there's a proposed new <coughs> building or some expansion that's gonna go on this property here. There's the uh, parking here, but essentially what would happen is gonna be expansion of some parking onto some land over on this area, which requires the rezoning. Some uh, key conditions of approval is that a solid buffer has to be provided and maintained along the side and rear property lines. Uh, there would be a prohibition on the storage of junk vehicles. Uh, on this site. Uh, the temporary storage of motor vehicles awaiting repairs must be stored in a manner screened from public streets and adjacent residential properties. And then the noise levels associated with this will be kept at a certain level between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. This is the subject properties you can see. This is the east view looking down Clinton Road. Of course, you can see the sign as per state statute requirements for public notification on the site. South view, looking immediately across the uh, uh, Clinton Road to the adjoining properties across the street. And then the west view, where you can see again the property immediately on the right hand side. Staff had recommended approval of this request. Again, when we took this to the planning board last month, they supported that by an eight to zero vote. Any commission have any questions? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Are there any uh, speakers? There are no speakers. Then I will public, uh, close the public hearing and uh, take a motion from uh, the commission. In zoning case 24007, I move to approve the rezoning request from RR Rural Residential District and CP slash CZ Plan Commercial Conditional Zoning District um, to planned to CP CZ Plan Commercial Conditional Zoning District and find that um, one approval is an amendment to the adopted current vendor area land use plan and that the Board of Commissioners should not require any additional requests or application for amendment to set map for this request. Two, the request is a modification to an approved conditional zoning and allows expansion of an existing business in the area. And three, a water line is available to the site to support expansion of the existing commercial development. The request is reasonable and in the public interest as the request district, requested district would be compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding land use activities and zoning. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. That takes us to zoning case 004. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. Again, somewhat in the same geographic location. Let me get the PowerPoint here started. Uh, as I stated, uh, in the general same area as just where we are before, centrally located between Eastover and Fayetteville. Uh, as you can see highlighted by the star, this is case 004. Um, the request is to go from C3 Commercial, uh, which is uh, currently a, a dormant district uh, in our ordinance, uh, and RR to RR Rural Residential. The applicant and owner is Mr. Uh, Larry Steedley, Barry Steedley and Terry Steedley Hall. Uh, the intent is basically to clean up some, sp uh, some split zoning on the property and some of the parcel lines in order to put a home on the property once the zoning goes through for about 2.03 acres. Uh, this is the subject property. Again, this is just more or less just a land use and notification map, but you can see highlighted in the red crosshatch area, the request itself, uh, pretty much surrounded by some single family. Uh, you do have a, what, what was identified as a commercial use on the adjoining property, but we couldn't find signs or records of the business. There's a big building out there, but we didn't see anything that was really overly showing signs of a business. But we anyway, so but we marked it as commercial. Um, as you can see by the zoning, there's a uh, existing RR sitting pretty much at this corner. 
Uh, but for the most part, uh, to the uh, west, east, and north, you can see it's pretty much in those areas surrounded with A1, which are larger area tracks for farming and so forth. But you can see the uh, zoning, so the request is to clean up this little C3 that you see in the middle and the RR and to take it into one designation in order to place a home on the property. Uh, there is a water line that runs up Middle Road here. Uh, there is no sewer out in the area, but it, and it does have hydric soils and hydric uh, inclusions in soils were identified on the property. Uh, this area was subject to the Eastover area land use plan from 2018, which called for rural density residential out there. So some of the associated zoning districts, which would deem to be compliant with the plan, include R20, R20A, RR, uh, R30, um, and R40s. So the uh, staff felt that the request was compliant with the adopted plan, and to be honest with you, would be cleaning up some split zonings and some issues going on with the property. This is the subject property itself. You can see a uh, single family home. You can see a large building in the back. That commercial business that uh, we had identified, I believe, is this is this bigger building that's sitting back in the back right here? Uh, 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 back uh, 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 no, please. Sorry. Yes, I'm gonna give you a chance, but you can't yell out in my meeting. Okay. So um, anyway, so anyway, it's just basically like you can see the subject property is a single family residential home. This is the south view on Middle Road, looking uh, well south. You can see the uh, lot immediately on the left hand side with the public notification sign sitting out in the front yard. This is the west view looking immediately across the street to the farm field. And this is the north view uh, just on the same street looking north with the site immediately on the right hand side. Uh, staff had recommended approval of the request. When we took this to the planning board last month, they supported the request by an eight to zero vote. So I'll try to answer any questions. No questions. I will open the public hearing. So uh, Rawls, if you go back to the one with the house and, and yeah. the building. Now I'll let you explain what, I think you wanted to say what that building was. Well, it's right Please come up to the microphone because okay. nobody can hear you from back there. I'm going to give you an opportunity even though you didn't sign up. This will give Rawls and them an idea what it is too. Yeah. You see the barn to the back and to the left? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That building, that the, it's not the one he pointed at. It's actually right behind the back house and it's butted up next. It's almost probably three or four feet from the barn. It was a place where he did uh, boat repair. But he passed away, and he hasn't worked that in a bunch of years. And I think his son inherited it. So that's, okay. that's all that is. All right. So two businesses that used to mm -hmm. be there aren't there anymore. Okay. All Mr. Right. Mr. Chair, have him identify himself for the record. Oh, yes, please. Uh, if you just give your name and address. Oh. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. He wasn't signed up to speak. I was just kind of clearing it up. But yes. Now, I'm Larry Steedley, one of the owners mm -hmm. of the property. All right. Uh, and I live in Stedman right now, 6239 Azalea Drive. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, with no speakers, I will close the public. Oh, you got two speakers? What two speakers I got? Yeah. All right, call the first. Larry Steedley. <laughs> oh, he just spoke, so we good with him. <laughs> Second speaker is Barry Steedley. And he spoke out, so he good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> We're close to public here. <laughs> Thank you. If I can get a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that in the case ZON-24-0004, I move to approve the rezoning request from C3 Heavy Commercial District and RR Rural Residential District to RR Rural Residential District and find that the request is consistent with the Eastover Area Land Use Plan, which calls for rural density residential at this location. The request is reasonable and in the public interest as the requested district would be compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding land use activities and zoning. There's a second. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. That will take us to case 0005. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Final case for the evening is uh, case ZUN24005. Again, this is a very popular area of the county, so we've seen a lot of activity out here for this, uh, you know, like for this evening. So the case itself, as you can see highlighted by the stars, again, in the uh, general area of Highway 24 in the central located area between Fayetteville and Eastover. <clears throat> The applicant owner is a Tanari Smith. The request is off of Whitehead Road with uh, right off of Highway 24. So if you can see Highway 24 here on this black and white map here, you can see Whitehead Road comes up off of there and then dead ends up in here. Uh, but the um, request is to go from MP and M1P Plan Light Industrial to M1P Plan Light Industrial. Again, this is more of a consolidation, trying to get everything under one zoning classification um, in order to be able to put a vehicle servicing operation there for about 1.3 
acres. Uh, out in this area, you can see there is a lot of commercial activity and non-residential activities. You can see, uh, I won't rattle all these names off, but you can see a lot of the names that are out here for the various folks that are currently operating out here. This property sits right here. And I, as I get to the zoning ordinance, you will see, um, I know it's kind of a misnomer because we said M1P and MP. There is a slight, the red, boundary right here of the western part is covering some of the M1P is sliding over onto this track. So we're just going to clean it up so it matches the property boundary. So the request is M1P and MP. Um, MP does not allow truck servicing in it, but M1P does. So that's why we're here this evening for this. But you can see there's a lot of industrial types of operations here for this little sort of node right here. But across the street, you have a lot of open farmland and it sits just outside of the city of uh, Fayetteville's uh, corporate limits. Uh, there is a water line that runs adjacent to this, as you can see here. I'm sorry. Uh, but And there's not really any kind of a presence of hydric or hydric inclusion soils for the property. Uh, the East Over Land Use Plan, again, is the one that would govern this particular piece of property. It does call for industrial out here. Uh, and uh, so the associated zoning districts, you can see some of the uh, goals and objectives there. But at the bottom, you can see the associated zoning districts for this are M1P and MP. So staff felt that the request was compliant with the adopted land use plan for this area. This is the subject property you can see sitting across the, uh, or I should say on the street, looking directly at it. Uh, this is looking northwest along nor uh, Whitehead Road. You can see the sign, again, out there to meet state requirements. Looking across the street on Whitehead Road, this is the north view, pretty much a wooded piece of property. And then you can see the southeast view uh, with the subject property immediately on the right-hand side. Uh, staff had recommended approval of the request when we took this to the planning board last month. They supported that eight to zero. So try to answer any questions you have. All right, anybody got any questions? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Are there any speakers? There are no speakers. I will close the public hearing. I will entertain a motion. <clears throat> In zoning case 24005, I move to approve the rezoning request from M M1P, hmm. Plan Light Industrial District, and MP, Plan Industrial District, to M1P, Plan Light Industrial District, and find that the request is consistent with the Eastover Area Land Use Plan, which calls for industrial at this location. The request is reasonable and in the public's interest as it is compatible to and in harmony with surrounding land use activities and zoning. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. That will take us to items of business. Uh, the very first one is consideration of granting a sidewalk easement to the city of Fayetteville at 325 uh, Scarborough Street that was obtained by the city and the county in 1945 is not developed uh, and uh, they want two and a half feet uh, adjacent to Old Women's Road on an unimproved lot uh, for a sidewalk easement. Mr. Chair, motion to approve. See a second. second. I I'll tell the city we're not going to charge them for this. You know, <laughs> The manager got a good laugh out of that because every time I call the mayor, it's like, what you going to give me for that? Yeah. Uh, it's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Uh, we've got a memorandum of understanding uh, between the Graves Creek Water uh, District and the Federal Public Works Commission. Uh, Mr. Manager. Yes, on uh, Friday, April the 12th, we uh, had a press conference announcing a memor this memorandum of understanding with PwC for so source water and safe source water in the Grays Creek community. This MO uh, MO MOU formalizes that agreement with the county and PwC and starts, uh, actually, if approved tonight, starts the uh, planning and development process. PwC, and to, to be short, uh, agrees to build the system and, and fully fund the system. The county, we agree to engage the uh, community of Grays Creek, uh, utilize any ARP funding to assist in the development of the system, share the distribution and technical information, and share our uh, MKR design distribution system with uh, PwC to expedite the development of the system and assist in contacting uh, residents uh, to uh, join the system and then assist with the acquisition of lease, leases, I mean easements, and uphold any service agreements and regulations that PwC has. And uh, I would just like to say, personally, I'd like to thank uh, PwC and Tim Bryant for their willingness to partner on this and uh, solve this uh, issue 
of Gen X in the Grays Creek community. Amen. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, uh, the reason we are addressing this is because of the health concerns re re related to the Gen X contamination and the PFAS. If I can get a motion to approve the MOU between the district and, um, uh, and PWC. So moved. And second. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank you. That will take us to nominations. Uh, <laughs> Kafir Valley Board of Trustees. Kafir Valley uh, Board of Trustees has um, two individuals recommended for reappointment, Dr. Michael Jones and Dr. Myron Strickland. That will take us to uh, the Fayetteville Cumberland County Economic Development Board. The Fayetteville Cumberland County Economic Development. Um, there, had, there is one um, nomination and from Commissioner Adams, and that's Dr. Mm -hmm. Ulysses Tyler. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. He oh. was here tonight. There's um, a typo. Is okay. that, yeah. Um, Taylor. Okay. All right. From Federal State on uh, the okay. your uh, business school. Yeah. All right. Uh, that will then. There are no appointments, so I will recess the, the board of commissioners meeting, and I will convene the Grays Creek Water and Sewer <coughs> Governing District. Uh, and that will take us to an item of business, which is the memorandum of understanding between the Grays Creek Water District and um, PWC. We've just heard that uh, presentation. If I can get a motion. So moved. And second. It's been moved to approve that MOU between the district and PWC. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, with that, I will adjourn the Grays Creek Water and Sewer District. I will reconvene the Board of Commissioners meeting, and I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, staff, for being here uh, tonight. I think we did some great work tonight. Thank you.